Uh, today is Thursday, Gino, which means this is only four days left of uh, listening Durkin. to the fantastic wow. voice of Tom Dirk and calling the races at Saratoga. In uh, order to honor the countdown of him closing in on his final day of racing, which will be Sunday, which, by the way, isn't closing day because they race on Labor Day also on Monday, but his final day will be on Sunday. So every day, starting uh, with 10 days left, we have been showing our favorite top 10 of Tom Durkin's calls. Today, we show you our number four. It's the 1998 Belmont Stakes. And they're off in the 130th Belmont Stakes. And Real Quiet's run for a triple crown. He came away to an uneventful start. And it is Cholito, as expected, who is going out for the early lead. Toward the outside, Raffi's Majesty is showing some speed today. Grand Slam is three wide and running in third position. Liminat runs up close to the pace in fourth. And Real Quiet's not too far away from the early lead. He's in behind horses running in fifth position. Yarrow Bray is just to his outside. Thomas Joe is running in seventh. Basic Trainee is eighth. Parade Ground ninth. And Victory Gallop is tenth on the outside. The early trailer is Classic Cat as the field makes their way toward that long run down the Belmont backstretch. And it's Chilito, and he's breezing along through a quarter that went in 23 and 3 fifth seconds. And a 48 and 3 opening half mile. The pace here is slow to develop. Grand Slam second on the outside. Limit out as running room at the rail. Right up there running in third. Yarrow Bray is fourth. Raffi's Majesty is running in fifth position. Kent DeSormo has guided the Derby winner and the Preakness winner real quiet to the outside for a clear shot at the lead as they continue midway down the backstretch. And he's moving early with six furlongs to go. Then farther back in the field, it's Thomas Joe Parade Grand. Victory Gallop is ten lengths from the lead as Real Quiet now makes a powerful run to the lead with five furlongs to go. Three quarters in one, thirteen and two. And the field moving into the far turn. It is still Cholito in front. Grand Slam trying to get by him. Real Quiet is in perfect striking position. He is third with three and a half furlongs to run. A break of five lengths. Raffi's Majesty is full out. He's running in fourth. Thomas Joe moves to fifth. Three furlongs from the wire. Real Quiet is making a bid for the lead. Cholito tore the inside. Grand Slam is in between those two. Five lengths to Thomas Joe. Raffi's Majesty toward the inside. Victory Gallop is six lengths from the lead, but he's gathering momentum. And as they arrive at the top of the stretch, Real Quiet is taking the lead. He's coming to the eighth pole. 20 years in the waiting. One furlong to go. But here comes his rival, Victory Gallop, as they come to the final 16th. Kent DeSormo imploring Real Quiet to hold on. Victory Gallop, a final surge. It's going to be very close. Here's the wire. It's too close to call. Was it Real Quiet or was it Victory Gallop? A picture is worth a thousand words. This photo is worth five million dollars. Oh, no. History in the waiting on hold till we get that photo finish. Oh, goosebumps. Every goosebumps time. Goosebumps 16 time. years later. Feels and like the first time. that's when Visa had that $5 million bonus for sweeping the Triple Crown. So that's what he was talking about with that extra, extra incentive for that photo. But it would not be real quiet. Victory Gallup wins by a nose and no Triple Crown win. Imagine how different that race call would have been had Victory Gallup just stayed in the back, you know, fifth or sixth, and Real Quiet wins by five. How much, how many um, things could have been coming into Tom Durkin's mind for the first Triple oh, Crown yeah. in 20 years? And I'm sure if that, that would have been, been the one. case, he would have nailed it too. And that would have been number one. But that's what's so great about Tom Durkin. No matter how it unfolds, he's always got some way to describe it that is just so exciting. And that's our, just imagine, that's such a great race call. And we still have three more that we don't know what they are. Yeah, it's, it's a tough time right now because so many mixed mixed feelings and mixed emotions. I sound like a broken record because I've said the same thing over and over for the past week or two. But we, we're going through this list, and you, you, you laugh and you smile a little bit, and you remember some of the, all these good calls and all these good times with Tom Durkin, and then it makes you think, oh, no, this he's, it's it, going to be gone. So at, at one point, you know you're happy. At the other point, you're going, oh, no, we're not going to hear him call a race next week. Anymore. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're really, this I truly am enjoying even a maiden race today 
just to get to hear Tom those last few times. Sunday, the final day that he will call a race.